The most powerful polyphenol in the world might be something that's being investigated a lot right now. Now this channel is all about looking at what is cutting edge, what are we seeing in the research, and how can we apply that to our lives to live better, longer, healthier lives, right? Well, I'm talking about one particular tetrahydroxyflavone known as luteolin. Okay, luteolin is what is called a tetrahydroxyflavone because it has four hydroxy groups. Now, what does that mean? It means it's a very stable, kind of unique flavonoid that has unique properties within the body. And we're seeing cool research on this. So let's start with the weight loss related research. Now, full disclaimer, a lot of the research we're seeing in vitro and we're seeing in rodent models because that's where it starts. But we have to be on the cutting edge, otherwise we're living in the past all the time. We have to look at these things and it's a plant-based flavonoid. It's not like a dangerous thing. It's something that's coming that we're deriving as a polyphenol from plants that just has cool benefit. But first we have to qualify flavonoids as being something good for weight loss in the first place. With that, I look at large scale epidemiological data. There was a study published in the British Medical Journal, it took a look at 124,000 people, and it found that when you looked at weight loss, subjects that consumed flavonoid rich diets lost more weight, but more importantly, they maintained the weight loss better. So we validate that flavonoids have an effect on weight loss, but what about luteolin specifically? Well, there's a study published in Molecular Nutrition and Food Research that was a rodent model study. Very interesting. They gave these rodents luteolin supplementation, and they found that it protected them against a high-calorie, high-fat diet, and ultimately protected them from gaining a lot of weight, from gaining fat, and from gaining what is called adipose tissue hypertrophy, where the fat cells are actually swelling and growing in a hypertrophic fashion, like a muscle cell would grow. Very cool stuff. What this possibly means is that the antioxidant, polyphenol, powerful components of luteolin might counteract overnutrition. We'll talk about how this works. It also had a powerful impact on insulin resistance too. Now researchers are speculating the reason why has to do with the brain. Luteolin may impact serotonin. Now if you're feeling really good, if you feel good, if all is happy in the world, you probably don't go stress eat. You might eat out of feeling good, but when serotonin's high, people usually make better food decisions. So they determined that it probably is this pathway because they found that when they eliminated the precursors to serotonin, the benefits of the luteolin didn't really exist anymore. So that means that this luteolin seems to be dependent upon serotonin. Just very interesting. But what about talking about insulin resistance? This is pretty interesting. There's specific research there on glucose. With this, we look at a study published in Biosciences, Biotechnology, and Biochemistry. It took a look at luteolin and it found that there was a statistically significant decrease in fasting glucose and insulin. Okay, we know this is pretty interesting. Okay, so there's definitely an interplay there, but let's look a little bit deeper. So with this, we look at a study that was published in the journal Diabetes, and it was looking at uh, statatic hepatosis. So this is like where, you know, fatty liver essentially, which does have a big role with high glucose and insulin resistance. They looked at subjects, in this case mice, that consumed luteolin for four, 12, or 16 weeks. Okay, across all time ranges, luteolin had a powerful impact on their glucose, had a powerful impact on their insulin, but a number of other things too. They found that it helped mediate crosstalk between the liver and the adipose tissue. So our liver and our fat tissue are communicating with each other at all times, okay? Now, when that communication is disrupted, that's when we can have too much fat accumulate in the liver, too much fat accumulate in the subcutaneous tissue. Okay, so by mediating this crosstalk, it basically was helping bring this all back to normal. What they also have found is that luteolin seemed to positively impact hepatic insulin sensitivity. So basically it was making us more insulin sensitive in the liver, which leads us to be less at risk for developing a fatty liver. The more fat that we develop in the liver, the more insulin resistant our liver becomes, and the more that we start to store fat around the liver and in the areas close to the liver, which can be visceral fat and a number of other things. Now what was really cool was they found that it activated insulin receptor substrate gene expression. What does this mean? Okay, well, if you're a science nerd like me, then gene expression is where you are creating new genes. Okay, you're expressing new genes, essentially. We were experiencing this situation in this study where genes were being expressed for insulin receptors. If you have more insulin receptors, you have more signaling potential. So basically, when insulin is released, it can hit more receptors and modulate glucose better. This is a huge step for metabolic issues, right? Very, very 
very important stuff. Now we do need to dive into the biggest component here, which is what it's doing in the world of neuroinflammation in the brain. Fascinating stuff that is dramatically going to impact our lives if it really ends up going all the way through. I popped the link down below for Verso, who has a luteolin supplement you can try, because I know it's gonna pop up in the comments, where do I get luteolin? You wanna get luteolin that comes with other compounds that support it. So Verso has luteolin combined with dehydroxyquercetin and also spermidine, okay? So these all work along different pathways as far as antioxidants and flavonoids go, okay? So you wanna have this sort of multi-angle approach when you're looking at this stuff with what is heavily researched right now. So when you look at the big picture of you know hepatic health, liver health, and you look at cellular health, when you look at the mental piece, it all comes together. So that link down below will save you 15% off whatever you wanna get from Verso. So whether it's their blend of these compounds or you wanna try out their clean being or anything else, some of their other products that are really cool. So that link again, down below in the description saves you 15% off. So check out Verso after this video. Again, you don't have to by any stretch of imagination. This is an educational video to teach about something that's probably gonna be big in the next like six months, 12 months. But if you do wanna jump on it and try it out, that link is down below. Now we look at a paper that was published in the journal Neuroinflammation. Took a look at microglial cells. Okay, so these are part of the brain cells, right? Microglial cells. Uh, that were healthy or lipopolysaccharide induced microglial cells, so meaning they were uh, they induced inflammation by exposing them to lipopolysaccharides. Inflamed brain cells, non inflamed brain cells. What they found is that when exposed to luteolin, it mitigated the inflammatory issues. So in the inflamed cells, it turned down the inflammatory response. It suppressed interleukin-6, it suppressed uh, chemokin ligand 10, and it suppressed various interferon components too. So this is really good because that would mean that like if we were dealing with neuroinflammation, it would attenuate that a little bit. They also saw that it turned down pro-inflammatory gene expression. So at the very root of what's creating this pro-inflammatory effect, it sort of turned that down. So brain inflammation, obviously a very big piece for brain fog, for neurodegenerative conditions, all kinds of stuff. So promising stuff there, but it gets even better. The journal Nutritional Biochemistry published a paper taking a look at rodent models because, yeah, we have the in vitro stuff, but let's take it one step further with rodents and see what this might be doing in an actual like mammal, right? Essentially, in short, it downregulated the expression of all kinds of different pro-inflammatory compounds. Okay, so uh, MCP1, different MI markers. It was just really interesting stuff to see this downregulation of gene expression while maintaining gene expression of anti-inflammatory components. So normally you see a downregulation of pro-inflammatory and a downregulation of anti-inflammatory, just turning down the whole thing. In this case, we were turning down the pro-inflammatory while maintaining production of anti-inflammatory markers. That's promising because it's demonstrating that we actually are selectively affecting pro-inflammatory genes. So what the heck is going on here with luteolin? We don't really know the mechanisms here. That's obviously what we're trying to find out. But these flavonoids, these different things, these are all so fascinating. And when you look at how plant medicine started in the first place with different things, I mean, most of our pharmaceutical industry was based upon that originally. So you can't totally just poo-poo plant medicine and say that's for woo-woo witch doctors when a lot of the advances in Western medicine came from that in the first place. So we start seeing this stuff early on it's kind of cool for biohackers like me. They're like into this and be like, how can I capitalize on this? So hopefully I shared something with you that allows you to capitalize on being the best version of yourself today. I'll see you tomorrow. Keep it locked in.